So the reason we're here and we get to do this really cool Zoom is it's the five year anniversary of the movie Ford versus Ferrari. And it was directed by James Mangold. And what um, I appreciated um, how they shot this movie, there was very little CGI as far as the actual racing scenes. Most of that stuff he really captured and really did some revolutionary shooting styles and, and really went with the authentic route of these are race cars, race car drivers are right driving these race cars and really wanted to, to capture the essence and the action and the adrenaline of of being in these races. So um, I started working here and right about when I started working here, we acquired these two cars, which I learned are the hero cars. And I knew there were stunt cars, but I didn't realize how much went behind acquiring, you know, or creating these cars, acquiring them for the movie. Do you build them? Do you rent them? Do you, you know, are they the real cars? Are they shells? And the more and more I dove into it, the more and more I realized the entire movie industry relies on these companies to create this forum. So I'm more than happy to introduce Billy Stabile. So he's the president of the Hollywood Car Company, and he's a uh, credited as a picture car supplier or picture mm -hmm. car builder. Um, can you, I guess, can you just explain what that is in layman's terms to people that don't know? Yeah, I, I, there's there's three aspects. Is there's a uh, picture car coordinator. He's the one on set. He's the one that reads the script that says what they're going to need. Um, and he's the one that searches for someone to supply what he, he is in need of. There's a picture car supplier and there's a picture car builder. I've filled the shoes of all three, sometimes all on the same movie. Mostly it's been the supplier um, and the builder all at the same time. Because usually we want to stand behind what we're supplying so you have your hands on what's being done. Um, being the picture car supplier builder, I get the script. I break it down and I tell him what I think it's going to cost and my notes about what he is going to additionally need to fulfill some of the scenes. On smaller shows we've done over the years, we are the supplier and the builder. Uh, something as big as this became, we had to re, uh, research and go outside the box because of number one, the time frame, number two, the cost. Um, to get this volume done and supplied to them in the time they needed and the cost. So being a supplier means you're going to come to me as 20th Century Fox and say, here's a script, this is what we need, how much and when. Okay. And that's where the battle starts. <laughs> and now the, the stunt coordinator, um, yes. obviously mm -hmm. there's, there's all different kinds of rigs from just shooting it to doing the stunts. So do they have a play? from the beginning or do you deliver the cars and they have to figure it out how does that relationship no we we work hand in hand with the sun coordinator he's our number one almost our number one guy because our number one thing is safety and reliability sure safety's at the top um he's the one that gets involved from the ground level and usually he's working with the director on scenes and deciding how they're going to shoot those scenes once they decide how that scene's going to be shot um they will then dissect it and come to me and say hey this car is going to do x and we need it to do x that car is built just for that per se and then it breaks down from there different scene by different scene and he's going to dictate to us what his needs are then we go back to production and say we need more money because we're going to build <laughs> two more of these and like i said it's it's always a battle it's, sure so can you name some of the the pictures that you've worked on? Well, I'm retiring now at the age of 65 from the business. I got in the business when I was 20. So I started at Paramount on TV shows, Mark and Mindy, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley as TV shows to do cars on those. Taxi, the TV show Taxi. Uh, I got to work with Steve McQueen on his last movie, The Hunter. Uh, after that, it was a lot of Paramount TV. You were just staff on those, if that makes sense. I was employed by Paramount. And they just pushed me onto these different shows to do what was needed. Um, I didn't go on my own and open my own business till 89 and started Hollywood Car Company to be a outside vendor. What was that mm -hmm. jump like for you to decide you've you've done enough where you could jump off and do your own? Scary. Company? Yeah. Real scary. Yeah. You know, every Thursday you knew you were going to get a check to, wow, you know, what's going to happen now? But uh, I worked for a guy, uh, producer Aaron Spelling. Yeah. And I worked for him for nine years. And I went to him on a freaking Friday and said, hey, um, I know I'm working for you and I have the shop for you and everything. 
and I want to go on my own. And on Monday, he helped me open up Hollywood Car. Pretty much. Really? He backed me. I uh, bought the real estate from him. I bought all the equipment from him. So without him, it would have been uh, pretty tough. But I was still doing dynast- uh, their TV shows, but I was now invoicing Aaron Spelling wow. and going on my own. Worked out pretty well. I'm a big fan of Aaron Spelling. Miss him dearly. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. when your, da- your dad got into the business, um, what kind of stuff did you know? Did he, he was staff, was he in there for yeah. a long time? He was staff at Universal. He started in the early 60s and um, he was doing all the shows as a staff mechanic. He did Tulane Blacktop, American Graffiti, all these big hit shows, Duel with Dennis Weaver. You know, he was working on all these shows. Did you start working with your dad with him? Or did he just get you an opportunity? Because I'm assuming you were a mechanic. That's all we knew how to do on weekends was work on cars, you know, to make a little extra money. Um, I was being groomed as a mechanic whether i liked it or not it's all i knew yeah uh so he was working at international harvester and then international harvester was supplying vehicles to the studios universal studios they needed a mechanic to work on all the trucks and trams boom my dad got hired there he joined the teamster union then guess what i went to go work at international harvester where he was he said i want you to work in the real world i don't want you getting involved in this business and um I signed up at the Teamsters Union, got a call to be a Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was kind of happy, but not. But he kinda, was nervous. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're never home. Long hours, 20-hour yeah. days, six days, seven days a week. So I'm just very proud that he worked on these big hits in the early days. And I finished with this one, which is such an ego boost to be part of this. Really, think about yeah. it. Our department, you know, this is this is what we do. So. And it's, I mean, some of the stuff... Obviously, Ford versus Ferrari is now slowly becoming an iconic movie, but you've worked on yeah. the fat, a Fast Five from the Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast Five a little bit. And um, that segues into the next conversation about we had the GT40s from that in our shop. And Michael Mann was supposed to, re- to direct this movie with uh, Tom Cruise. Interesting. Yeah. That would be, that's very interesting. Yeah, it was very interesting, this whole meeting that was going on in our shop and uh, knowing that I read the book Go Like Hell, I saw this movie starting to go away that I was hoping it wouldn't. And yeah. when Mangle got on board, it was a whole different read on the storyline and how it turned out. Which when they send you this list of you know the wish list of cars that they need, do they give you a blank checkbook? Do you fu- do you front <laughs> that money or how does that work? Yeah, well, I don't get a list first. I get the script first, and then I read and make my notes and I tell them kind of pretty much what they're going to need along with the picture car coordinators list, the stunt coordinators list, and then the studio comes with, this is our budget. They come to me with the number first. This is, this is our budget. Um, James Mangold wanted a lot of the original cars in this movie. And you know that the original cars are worth insane amount of money. money. Yeah. That's not going to happen. So that guy papooed right away. Yeah. Yeah, I, they come to me with the number, which is their starting point. And uh, they never thought this movie would be anything. And as it started to get towards the end, the ask for more funds is easily available more than it was in the beginning. But um, back to the funding, we we sometimes have to lay out all the money. Yeah, and this one was a lot of outlay. Um, even though we were trying to stay up on invoicing, um, the requests were every day changing. It wasn't, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go have a nice long lunch today. That never happened. Yeah. It was always just, so, the phone was constant, constant. Yeah. So we, uh, we outlaid coming from, coming from the studio to you saying we need to change this or now we need this. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Or in the, the picture car coordinator, Rick Collins, he kept his head on. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> they were beating them up pretty good. So you have, first of all, you have you have to replicate and build the cars from the movie. But I've learned, and if I I've YouTubed a lot of behind the scenes and and yeah. watching how they shoot these, and it's just some of the contraptions they make are insane. Yeah. With it's just half a car, but the cameras you can get the in, uh, interior shots, and then yeah. I saw a picture. It showed you know in the 30s they just roped a dude with a camera yeah. to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to yeah. get those shots. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy how far it's come. But now, I mean, there's a stunt driver driving above the entire car where the, he's just pretending and there's so many different techniques. So do yeah. you build those rigs on top of the car? No, that's special effects. Okay, so like... That is all, we'll get involved somewhat. But now that's all special effects. And like they say, if you're ever stranded on a deserted island, <laughs> you want to be with a special effects guy. You know, these guys... <laughs> are just involved in all this amazing work. For Ford versus Ferrari, how many cars? We we did year? almost 100, right around 100 cars. That's insane. Of supplying. And what's yeah, the time yeah. frame that you had to have all that done? That was changing all the time. I was outsourcing to Fran uh, at RCR. He was doing the Ferraris and the P3s. And that's the race car uh, replicas? Race car replicas in Fraser, Michigan. So how, uh, how many of those were those like the main the, the, yeah, so there was the four GT40s. That was the main car, and then there was the Ferrari 330s. Yeah, same exact powertrain. Everything was identical powertrain, that um, and suspension pretty close. That if you needed to borrow from one to the other, everything was interchangeable. But that Fran also had that already in play. He already had the GT40s going, and actually the Fast Five GT40 from Fast Five was his also. It was an easy reach out to Fran from having a little history with him. When you give these this assignment to RCR and you, okay, here's how many cars I need, here's when I need them by, yeah. how far along into the build do they pass them? Do they go through your shop? Do they go straight to the yeah. studio or how does they that They were work? coming to us, yeah, well, special effects get some last. We okay. do our thing and then they get theirs unless we're building one specifically for them. Um, we were getting them from Fran as kits pretty much you could say okay um and then we were turning them over to uh, our shop to get them a little more put together and then we brought them to the studio teamsters to those guys and they they made the magic happen they were the ones under the gun yeah so we put a lot of pressure on fran we you know when you own your own company to the normal consumer it's not going to be ready for three weeks four weeks a month that doesn't fly Right. And we pay for that. We pay for the ex expedite. Yeah, the expedite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, expedite. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's tough. I'm the last buck, right? They're calling me at four in the morning and yep. saying, hey, okay, what do we got coming today? And it better be what they need because they right. have guys standing around waiting on us. And we, you don't want to hold production up. And yeah. uh, we never did. So, yeah, I learned that there were Chevy engines, uh, LS3. Yeah. And LS3, then yeah. And so that was pretty much used on all of those cars, like you said, all of them. for yeah. continuity, for consistency, for you're not trying to well, find a bunch of extra parts. Yeah. And uh, Fran already had that jig set up, so that made it easier to get them quicker. Totally. He already had that in play, so we went with that. Now, I did try to call Ford in the beginning of this and get some uh, Ford engines donated and thinking they'd be all on board, but uh, no, nah, that didn't happen. Really? Uh, no. Even though the triumphant story of Ford conquering no, Ferrari did not have to do with it. So they, the Ford didn't supply it, but I remember one of the scenes that um, Miles was working on an engine, and I think it was that was a Ford engine, right? Yeah, that was my personal cab GT40 Mark One. That was my personal car. Oh, um, you had, so you did you have some in your shop? Yeah, that was my car that I had in the shop. Okay. Um, you know that i didn't rent on movies it wasn't in, in driving scenes i would just let them do stagnant shots and it was a golf car um painted golf and uh we wrapped it in that blue to where it shows him working on it and uh he's underneath the car working on it that's my that's a cab brian grams who um several years ago purchased these cars from you yeah. so um and i you, regret that <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about these two cars yeah, the number one there's your main hero car, the one that all the interior shots are done and everything. Um, which means the front end of that car came off and it went behind the insert trailer for some insert shots. Um, but mainly that car, and it played in other scenes also, but the main thing about that car was for all your interior shots. There you go, yeah. And so, and so how many of these were made? Well, they all changed. You know, I'm gonna say three, three or four, but they all didn't, they all didn't end up too well like that one did. <laughs> so were they, you know, they, they did got they have stunt cars or camera cars? I saw, I saw one where it was cut in half and they had the cameras yeah. built on. So how many, they had a couple yeah. of Yeah, you know, we changed doors, changed graphics all the time. Everything was interchanging. Um, but the one hero car you guys had was primarily made for all the close-up yeah. driving scenes and everything. Um, 
we still have the tub for a, uh, the tub for with the pedals in it, which has a hole cut in it to shoot the pedal scenes uh, for the footwork of shifting and all that um, and the shifting. Uh, but that car you guys have was all the interior through the windshield of Christian Nolan, all the facial expressions and all yeah. that. Yeah, that's a fast car. I think Superformance sold one yeah. of the number one cars for well, a lot, like yeah. a half a million dollars or something like that. But yeah, they had three cars. Um, they had a number one car dressed as number one. They had a black number five. And I don't know what else they had. I didn't, I went, uh, that deal didn't work out when I went to Superforms to do the whole thing, but they had the number one car that I think got used, you know, it was the real Ford power. They have a great product, Superforms, great product. Um, they didn't get stunted too much, but they did a lot of driving scenes with them. And there's a telltale sign that you could tell which is a Superforms car and which is not. And that is, the secret is if you look where the rear hatch comes over to the rear of the cab superformance has two what would you call that uh, hood hood pins like in the old days you had the hood pins yeah. on your front hood they have those on their back and or one in the center too and uh the super uh the fran rcrs do not have any of that back there it's just plain okay and that's how you could tell but uh, yeah those are those were used pretty much for a lot of the baby scenes where they didn't want to damage those cars too much they're they're scooters though they're a good yeah. fast car nice car yeah really finished so, off nicely and these are and but the one we have is the was the hero car from the movie right from us or yeah the other extra the one that got used yeah i don't think super performance wanted us pulling stuff off of their car to get it on an and get shots and everything anything. um yeah do you because I, I think there was 12 gts i want to say i read somewhere it was about 12 gts that were that were made for the movie and I think yeah. I, I know I know we had the this uh this one here the not number yeah. ninety five this was in the Daytona shots yeah Daytona I race, still but own, I think this was repurposed for a couple other cars too right yeah but I still own the Crash ninety five I still have that in my warehouse oh really yeah that was re that I um can I jump to the gold number five that you remember at the end of the movie yes um, yeah. that car I sold and if you pull the wrap off of it it carries. The Daytona, the red, yeah. white, and black. So if you pull the wrap off the gold one, you're going to find that. Ah. Um, so they all play different things. But that car, we have the we have the stunt car still um, from that car in our shop that I look at just about every other day. Someday I'm so, going to put it back together. Yeah. You know? Do you remember? So this was the hero car as well. Was were yeah. these repurposed? Because I think there were less of these made than the GTs, right? Yeah. Now. Um, what did we end up by still? Probably four of those. Hold on one second. Yeah, we did a car show right after the movie for children's ch children's charity. And I brought all the cars to that charity and there was a shot of all the cars lined up. And I believe that was 20. We had a 19 there. This was the fake number one, which was to be the J car. Um, and that's the car you guys have right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, the 27, yeah, I'm trying to think exactly how many. But they didn't change numbers too much, really. Um, so is this the one that had Bandini for all the interior shots? And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the one. Very pretty car. Fast yeah. car, did you drive that car? Uh, yeah, so I, drive, I barely fit in it, though, man. Those, that's like a 45-degree angle when you close yeah, it. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Um, but the stunt, you know, the stunt guy, Tony Hunt, who was a real race car driver, he's the one that doubled for Ken Miles in the Cobra. Um, and he's driving all these. And, you know, there were Robert Engel was the stunt coordinator. And, you know, things go wrong. Things are tough to keep a, 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 on a rain scene. These cars, they are not good. So we tried everything with different tires, grooving and all that for the rain scenes because they were driving at speeds. Yeah. This was not a CGI, you know, movie. It was really happening, and it's scary when uh, these cars get up to 150. That, so, know, do they are they reinforced? I mean, race cars. I'm assuming are just, you know, obviously safer than a movie car. Oh, like sure. How much, yeah. how much went into the to the safety? Obviously, there's depending a on the scene, depending on what scene it was going to be in, would be specifically 
reinforced with crash bars in that area, whatever yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. Um, none of the Ferraris got wrecked. None of those were any, if it was a wrecked Ferrari, it was a don't, uh, just a body or something okay. that was mounted on something else, but none of the RCR Ferraris. Um, but yeah, people don't realize how fast these cars are. You know? <laughs> Even for so, movie cars, I was like, no, these are legit just, race cars. Yeah. These are well, you know, f you could buy one. Well, you can't buy these anymore because Ferrari put a cease and desist the, uh, letter out on copying their body. So these are these are it. There's no more to be had. You know, so you was can't... that after after you put these into production for the movies? And they're like, all right, no more. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Luigi came knocking on the door. <laughs> we could handle this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> I want to see a video of those things being destroyed, those molds. It's funny, we have the um, one of the original cars from Miami Vice, and they had one of those too that was a replica. And uh, that came and they, same Same issue with that that they had. They had two of those for the show, and they did, came knocking on their door, and they're like, all right, hold on a second. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, show me where the mold is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have, I'm assuming you didn't build all 100 of these cars and you have no, no, no. and creating the, the specific ones that you need. Yeah. So what are, I mean, do you look on eBay? Do you have all sources for this stuff? Do you go yeah, on eBay? Well, yeah. Where do you I got to you? meet Chuck Beck, you know, Beck Spider Speedster, Chuck Spider, Beck. Yeah. And I went to Atlanta and I walked in his shop and God, I love him. I love that man. Uh, 80 something years old, still going. And I still walked going. in. And I said, yeah, I'll take those two 904s. I'll take those two speedsters and I'll take that spider. And, you know, do you rent uh, these cars or do you buy them? I buy them. My company owns all these cars. Okay. Um, we, we build, we own, and we rent to you or lease to you. And at the end of the movie, they all come back to me. They're so then mine. you yeah. get like car clubs or, you know, if you're looking for a, a certain amount of Corvettes or Porsches or whatever, mm -hmm. can you reach out to those clubs and they'll just rent them for a day or two for yeah um if it's you know we'll lie to you we'll tell you the car is just going to sit there not going to be driven <laughs> it's going to be parked and at the spur of the moment the director will say i need that car to pull up in the scene how do you say no to that right you're there with the car you try to get in touch with the owner you make another deal because you're just paying him for a stagnant um if it's a high-end car we'll ask that the owner comes with it and if that decision comes at the spur of the moment, he's there to answer. He's there to make that call. There was a Beach Boy movie documentary made you know, about Brian Wilson, and we rented our 65 Corvette. And, yeah, it's just going to sit there. And I said, okay, because it's a real special car. And I got the car back, and it was all scratched on the hood. And what the hell happened? Nothing. It wasn't anything we did. And I saw the movie and I saw him slide across the hood, <laughs> you know, and of course this was after the movie came out production show, but uh, I'm just, I'm a victim of it too, you know, cause my buddies will call and say, Hey, I noticed you have that Corvette. I noticed you have that Ferrari. You have that sitting there, Roadster or whatever. Cause you know, usually we have 300 cars in our inventory from all the other movies, just sitting in a big field yeah. or in warehouses. Um, mostly they were police cars and stuff that you could repaint to use in other shows. But uh, I'm just, I'm a victim of it too, you know, cause my buddies will call and say, Hey, I noticed you have that Corvette. I noticed you have that Ferrari. You have that sitting there, Roadster or whatever. Because, you know, usually we have 300 cars in our inventory from all the other movies just sitting in a big field yeah. or in warehouses. Um, mostly they were police cars and stuff that you could repaint to use in other shows. You know? Yeah. So for yeah. for the for the cars, the 100 cars that you're acquiring for Ford versus Ferrari, were, any, were there like a group or a collection of cars that were like just impossible to find or really tough to get? Yeah, you know that, the Ford Falcons. And that was the Ford Falcons for the assembly line. And, you know, I went to Francois, who was the production designer, and I said, look, why don't we just buy one Falcon? I'll pop a fiberglass mold off the body and, you know, we could make fenders and we could make things. And he was pretty persistent. He wanted the real cars. And uh, I thought, no brainer. I'm going to I'm going to budget two grand a car for a 60s Falcon. I mean, come on, you know, yeah. the hardest thing I ever had to do was try to find <laughs> 20 of those. But it all worked out okay, you know, but it was tough. I think the word got out after the 12th one I was trying to buy because I wasn't telling him who I was or what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'd send my driver with the car carrier with seven, fa five Falcons on. He's picking up number six and they go, <laughs> what's that about? Yeah. yeah. So now you have, you're retiring. I, how do you feel about that? Is that, are you going to I've been retiring for you... five years, you know, um, busier than ever. Are you selling off a lot of your, your inventory? Your yeah, yeah I, I'm down to 
just a couple of little things. Like I said, I have the, uh, the crash green and white that you guys have. I have one Ferrari and one, uh, GT 40, GT 40. It's and you hard, said it's you still have the windshield that he threw the wrench through. Do you still have that? Yeah, that's that's right behind me, isn't it? Yeah. Just dug this out. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the <laughs> wrench scene. There that's was three awesome. of these. This is the last one, and it keeps on getting moved around from warehouse to warehouse. But Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, you think at the end of a movie, we usually throw all this stuff out. Yeah. You know, it just goes in a dumpster and this all got held on to. There's not too many movies now. Sorry, there's not too many movies now that have cars as the prominent character in the movie. And I think that's I'm I'm happy to see that you work on projects like this that keep those kind of car movies going, because I feel like this new culture really needs to get excited about that. And these kind of movies help keep that excitement going. I think I think Mangold hit it, though, with not only just the cars and the car guys, but everyone seemed to love the movie yeah um i was fortunate enough to be able to rent a movie theater and i invited like 40 of my closest friends and i was able to get the film before it came out cool and i invited from you know kids their parents friends the school parents just i just wanted to see where it hit them yeah and they all walked out of there loving it you yeah. know so there's something yeah, we all love car movies. We go back to Hollywood nights. We could go back to, you know, car movies, but they just have missed to gravitate towards grabbing the whole family as one. Sure. Which I think we're missing a lot of these days in a lot of movies. But um, I think this one was able to bring everyone together and there was something in it they liked. The guys that didn't like it are the purists. But what's funny sure. is um, the people that bought a lot of these cars for me seem to be the biggest Ferrari collectors and GT40 collectors. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you bash it, you bash it, but you got to have it. So, you got to have you know. one. <laughs> yeah. Even though creatively you couldn't do it, but just the fact that you pulled off a pretty insane task and to see how, how well it went over. I mean, that's that's a really cool piece of movie yeah. that you're a part of. I'm a part of it. I don't want to take too much credit, but I was a part of it. And um, it was just... It was cool to go on the red carpet in Hollywood uh, with these cars and uh, be on the red carpet and answer questions. And just to be a part of that is pretty cool. And uh, since our shop was in Hollywood, which was only two minutes away, we don't trailer these cars. Yeah. The red car. We drove them. You drove them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the kids that come and see these cars is amazing. The young kids that got into it i think because well five years ago shoot they're probably 15 now maybe we made a difference in their decision in life which way they're gonna go 100%. For a living. i'm glad you're putting it out there that they're not just fiberglass bodies on a volkswagen pan right uh they're the real deal you yeah. know they 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 fat they're fast they did high speeds and it's kind of cool that uh people understand that because there's a lot that went into these you know, Fran does a great job. Super performance does a great job. But um, yeah, I'm glad to see it's still still pressing on, man. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and th thanks awesome. for the invite again, man. I appreciate this is it. this is a lot of fun and uh, happy retirement. And you know, Thank when you, you finally buddy. settle so, some of the shit off, come out and visit us and hang out with I'm us. I'm gonna come visit. <laughs> All right, thanks again. All right, thank you, Billy. Appreciate it. Bye bye.